Hello, this is Pastor Jeff. We want to thank you for joining us for this online worship experience. I hope you're blessed by this word today. And if you want to know more about Hope Church, you can visit us at this website below me, realchurchforrealpeople.com. Each and every person here, you have a song. You have a song, and guess who is completely worthy of it? Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Amen. He is worthy of our worship, and he is worthy of your song. Amen. We're not just going to get into an atmosphere. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray you fall in this house, Lord. Let your spirit be felt. I pray you break some chains today. I pray you break some generational curses today. I pray you break some strongholds today. I know the power of my God. Amen. He is so good. In Jesus' name we pray this. Let's just worship him, church. Come on. I'm going to sing till my heart starts changing. I'm going to worship. I mean every word There's a way that I'm feeling And the fear that I'm facing Doesn't change who you are Or what you deserve I give you my worship Cause you still deserve it
Every trophy will be laid down. 
Jesus Christ, the King of all. Jesus Christ, the King of all. King of So so good, you've so so good. Let's just take a minute, bask in his presence as he is here now. The spirit of the Lord is here now. And where the spirit is, there is freedom. Where the spirit is, there is deliverance. Where the spirit is. Where I want to be. Oh, yes. That's where I want to be. Yes, amen. What a savior. What a friend you are, God. We're going to start out if you want to get your Bibles out. Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 2. I'll give you 10 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a Bible sword drills. You got 10 seconds. You better find the, the scripture. All those kids who raised who were raised in church are going to be like, and get it like that. Habakkuk 1. How long, O oh Lord, must I call for help? But you do not listen. Violence is everywhere. I cry, but you do not come to save. Must forever I see these evil deeds. Why must I watch all this misery? Wherever I look, I see destruction and violence. I am surrounded by a people who love to argue and love to fight. The law has become paralyzed. There is no justice in the courts. The wicked far outnumber the righteous so that justice has become perverted. Justice has become perverted. The unrighteous outnumber the righteous. Come on. What does this place sound like? Sounds like the world. I'm just going to let you think about that. How many times must I cry? How many times must I cry, but you do not listen? How many times must I call for help before you actually hear me? I think we've all been there before. Lord, there's this mountain. Lord, there's this valley. And I need it moved. How many times must I cry out, Lord? How many times must I call out to you, Lord, before you listen to me? You've all been there before. Amen? I've been there before. I'm not perfect. I've been there before. Lord, you're not here. You're not listening. Where are you? I've been there before. I think y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I think y'all know what I'm talking about. See, but then Habakkuk got a response from God. And I doubt it was the one he wanted. The Lord replied to him. Amen. It's always great to get a word from the Lord. I, I like to imagine that Habakkuk was, this, was excited. He's like, oh, I'm getting a word from the Lord. He's like, okay, God's going to tell me I'm going to turn it all around. I'm going to send a great person to come down and completely change the world and everything's going to be good. That's probably what Habakkuk was expecting. He's like, yeah, okay, Lord, I'm listening. I'm all ears. And the Lord replied, look around at the nations and be amazed, for I'm doing something in your own day, something that... You would not believe even if somebody told you about right. it. Right. I am raising up the Babylonians, a, a cruel and violent people, that they will march across the world and conquer other lands? <laughs> what? <laughs> Hold up, God. Come on. Let's take a step back here. You're telling me everything's bad, so what you're going to do is you're going to let things get worse now? What? That doesn't, that doesn't make any sense. That won't make any sense to any one of us, right? Come on. Imagine if you say, Lord, I have a need, and he says, guess what? It's going to get worse. That's not the response you want. That's not what you want to hear. 
God basically told Habakkuk that he's going to rise up. He's going to raise up a nation, the Babylonians. And they're even worse than the Israelites could ever be. And they're going to completely conquer and subjugate the Israelites. Now, who would hear that and say, amen, thank you, Jesus. Come on. Thank you, Lord. See, Habakkuk was expecting God to turn it around. But instead, God said, it's going to get worse. Come on. Habakkuk said, should you be silent while the wicked swallow up people more righteous than they? Should you be silent while the wicked prevail over the righteous and subjugate the righteous? Should you be silent whenever difficult times come to me? Should you be silent in this world whenever it gets worse and worse and worse and it's getting to the point that evil is good and good is evil? Should you be silent, Lord, whenever everything is getting worse and worse? Are we just fish to be caught and killed? Are we only creatures that have no leader? Must we be strung up by their hooks and caught in their nets? Will they rejoice and celebrate them? They will worship their nets and burn incense in front of them and say, these nets are the gods who have made us rich. Will you let them get away with this forever, Lord? Will they succeed forever in this heartless conquest? Will the wicked forever succeed in this conquest? Will the situations that I'm facing forever prevail? See, the story of Habakkuk really resonates with me because Habakkuk was human. He, he didn't, he wasn't someone who was going to say, oh yeah, I'll take it, Lord. Let things get bad, amen. He said, he said no, I don't want that, God. I don't want that at all. Nobody wants that. Come on. Who here wants bad times? Honestly. Come on. I don't. And he couldn't understand how a good God could let evil prevail in the world. How many here have wondered how a good God can let evil prevail? How many here have wondered why things get worse whenever we know that God can turn it around like that? Habakkuk had a prayer. Habakkuk had a prayer. He had a need he brought to God. And he didn't get the response he wanted. And maybe sometimes we just don't get a response. It gets, gets frustrating. It's like, why would God allow this? I think we've all questioned that before. God, why are you allowing this to happen? Come on. His question was, why aren't you answering my prayer, God? Why does God allow so much evil? Will you allow this to continue, Lord? Will you allow this to continue? Well, we know what's going on in our world. I don't have to tell you. You just need to turn on the news from just about any source from 10 min for about 10 minutes, and you can see exactly what's going on. Come on. Come on. Things aren't good. Actually, they're getting worse, I would say. Worse and worse and worse. Habakkuk's prayer wasn't answered how he was hoping it was going to get answered. It's hard for us to understand whenever that happens. It's hard for us to understand whenever the prayer doesn't get answered in the way we want. What if you pray for restoration and God removes? What if you pray for healing but it doesn't come on earth? What if you pray for a relationship? Lord, work in this relationship. I give this relationship to you. I offer it up to you. And then it falls apart. Lord, I give you my health. I give you my health. I trust you completely with my health. And it gets worse. You get a report that says it's not looking good. Lord, I trust you with my finances. Oh, not many people trust them with the finances. <laughs> Supposed to give your 10%, right? That's a tithe. How many people actually trust God with their finances? Come on. That's the hard one, I find. That's the hard one. But whenever you get to a breaking point where you have no other option, you're going to say, okay, Lord, I trust you with my finances. I'll give it to you now that it's gotten bad and it gets worse. 
It's hard to understand that. It's hard to accept that. Whenever you pray so earnestly for something, and it doesn't come to pass. I've had a lot of unanswered prayers. I've had a lot of unanswered prayers that broke me in a time. I had a lot of unanswered prayers that completely tore me down, made me feel weak, made me feel worthless, made me feel vulnerable. And I'm thinking, God, why are you letting this happen? Why are you letting this happen? What if you don't understand what God's doing? See, we as Christians face that often. Because, you know, one of the biggest words in the Bible is trust. It don't matter who you are, it's almost impossible to trust. Everybody has trust issues. You know, it's, it's, it's easy to trust with a little bit, but what happens whenever it gets ugly? What happens whenever I have to show God the ugly side that I don't like to talk about? See, because here's the thing that we like to do a lot of times. We like to just kind of push it to the side. We like to just ignore it. It's like, okay, Lord, I'm doing this and this and this. You can have this all, Lord, but this, this is just the one thing. And it's, it's, actually, it's actually not that bad if you look at it in a different way. It's, te- it's not as bad as this, right? At least I'm not doing that. Come on. Come on. At least I'm not that person doing that. I mean, look at how righteous, look at how righteous I am over here. I'm just doing this and they're doing that. Come on, come on. That's what we do. A lot of times that's what we do. I mean, you hate to admit it, but it's true. Because a lot of times we will rationalize sin. We will rationalize sin. God says, I see sin. Say, yeah, but yeah, sure, sure I do that, but I'm not. I'm I didn't kill anybody. That's not that. I didn't kill nobody at least, right? God says, I see sin. So yeah, yeah, I, I know it's not the best thing to be doing, but at least I didn't I didn't kill anybody, right? At least I didn't, at least I'm not an adulterer, right? I've been faithful. Ooh. I may be looking at some things on the internet, but at least I'm not cheating with an actual person. I may be having one too many to drink, but at least I'm completely cognizant enough that I'm not, you know, at least I'm not an angry drunk. At least I don't beat up on people whenever I'm drunk. Come on. Come on. That's what we do. Sometimes we like to rationalize things. We like to rationalize it. And it's like, well... At least I'm not that person. Sure, this is bad, but like it's not as bad as that. But let me tell you something. God sees sin is sin is sin is yes. sin. That's right. Come on. Come on. We like to hammer on certain sins, right? We like to make those ones the worst, but sin is sin. Come on. And God sees it as nothing except that. That's right. See, because God doesn't have no tear bracket where it's like, these are the bad ones and these ones are. They're in the book. They are sin. That's it, period. That's right. God said, God never said that it was going to be all sunshine and rainbows whenever you're a Christian. From time to time, it's going to get a little bit uncomfortable to be a Christian. We sing, we'll, we'll sing songs about, you know, wanting to be purified and stuff. It, it's great to sing about being purified until you put them under the fire. That's whenever it's not fun. That's right. It's, it's, Lord, I want you to make me into this thing. I, I want you to build me up, Lord. I know my calling, and I want you to shape me into it, Lord. But then you know what happens? He takes the chisel and the pick and take that away. Ouch. Take that. Away. Hmm, there's an imperfection there. Come on. It's not fun to be chiseled. It hurts to have things removed forcibly. Because that's what it is. If you pray to God created me a clean heart, Come on. he's going to do it. 
But you know what that means? That means the stone's going to get broken away at the heart of stone. And you're going to get a heart of flesh in its place. Amen. Heart surgery is painful. Yeah. That's why they put people on sedatives. Right? Come on. Yes. Come on. We don't get sedatives. We have to experience it. Whenever we get a new heart, create in me a clean heart, oh Lord. Okay, I'm going to do it. You're not going to like it, but I'm going to do it. It's going to be good for you. I'm gonna do See, here's the thing, you know. Come on. <laughs> It's easy to just take the easy road, you know? It's easy to it's easy to eat a lot of food. You know, it's uncomfortable. It's having to watch what you eat, having to do a little bit of exercise and stuff. That's one we never talk about, right? Gluttony. We like to ignore that one. <laughs> we like to ignore that one completely a lot of times. But you know, what's comfortable is to just do what you've always done, eat all the food, because food is comforting. What's uncomfortable is to be watching to be taking care of the temple that God gave you because your body is the temple. You know, what's comfortable is to be puffing on the cigarettes whenever you're used to that. That's what you've always known. But what's uncomfortable is to maybe cut back a little bit. Maybe cut back a little bit. What's comfortable is whenever you had a bad day to go to that bottle, to go to that website. What's uncomfortable is to take the straight and narrow path. Why is the way? Amen? It's easy to take the highway because that's what it is. It's easy to take that way. It's wide. It has room for everybody to come through and you don't have to worry about no mountains or valleys whenever you take that way. No potholes. No potholes in the road. Wow. See, I'm not here to beat you up. That's not what I'm here to do. <laughs> Believe it or not. See, because sometimes we got to talk about things like that. Sometimes it's easy to ignore those things, but they have to be spoken about. That's right. Because God promised that evil may exist and may prevail, but he also promised that the victory already belongs to him. That's right. We don't even have to fight the battle because the victory is already won. You know, sometimes that comes back to the trust. It's so easy to, to stand your guard and try and fight anything that comes your way. You know what's really hard to do? Come on. Come on. I'll let you fight the battle, Lord. I'll give you the battle. I'll trust you with the Lord. I'll trust you. The way I see it, there are two roads. There's a lot of ways to the one road, but there's only one way to the right way. Come on. There's plenty of ways you could go down the path to hell, but there's only one way to the path to the Father. Come on. I just think about it. You know what book of the Bible just really gets me excited, even though I don't understand it a lot of the times, is the book of Revelations? Because you read the end, we win. We win. Struggles may come, but we win. See, sometimes we just feel like, God, I've been wandering aimlessly. I don't know what to do at this point. I've been going this way for so long that I don't even know the path I should be taking. See, because it's easy to, it's easy to right, go a little bit astray. God says, God says, right, I want you to go this way. This is the pathway. I've written it out for you. I've given you the clear instructions Right? I've given you the clear instructions on how to go this way. And they're like, yeah, God, amen. Amen, let's follow the path, God. Yeah, we're supposed to go that way. That's the straight path. Amen, God. Yeah, yeah, amen, God. We love that path. We love that path. What? Where'd you go, God? Come on. I have a need now. Where did you go? You abandoned me. Oh, come on. That's what we do sometimes. And sometimes there will be distractions, right? Sometimes there will be things to lead you astray. Because that's what the enemy does. The enemy, he'll be like, oh, I'm a college student. You think I'm going to pull out like a 20 or something? I, I have a dollar. <laughs> and the enemy will be like, yeah, but if you come this way, I'll give you this. This, this, this. You, you want this, don't you? You want this. You don't want to have to worry about money, right? It'll be easy. Just come this way. And that's what the enemy does. That's what the enemy does. And you know, we follow that path, and what happens is, well, oh, 
we'll fall. Come on. We'll, we'll stumble. And then that's whenever we're like, God, you abandoned me. I, I was, I, you told me you were never going to leave me, and now here I am on the ground. That's what happens sometimes, but you know what's the worst? <laughs> Is whenever you're going this way, whenever you're taking the path you're supposed to be taking, and the bad things still come. Reminded of a man named Job. Lived righteously. Amen. Lived righteously. He lived an upright life. He prayed. He had a connection with God. But he lost everything. That's what's really difficult to accept. That's where it gets hard is whenever we're taking the right path and the storm still comes. Come on. You've never even stumbled. You've never even fall, fallen. But you've still ended up in this terrible place. That's what happens sometimes. The world is not a bright place. It's not. The world's not all sunshine and rainbows, they say. But here's the thing. We have a light. That's right. Come on. Come on. Come on. And my Bible says that the light prevails over the darkness, and the darkness can't comprehend it. I'm speaking to somebody right now because this wasn't this wasn't in there. I'm telling you now, you are following the path you are supposed to be on. Stay faithful. Stay the course. I promise it is worth it at the end. You may not be able to see it right now in the difficulty, but I promise that he is working everything around right now for you. Do not get discouraged. Take courage and claim the peace of God. That surpasses all understanding. That's right. The peace where you can be in a storm sleeping. Because it's easy to sleep in the middle of a storm whenever you know that the one who can calm it with a word. Yes. It's easy to sleep in a storm whenever you know that the one who can calm the storm with a word is riding in the boat with you. Come on. You have an anchor and it holds. Yes. You have a peace that will hold. I promise no matter what difficulties come, it will hold. Thank you, yes, thank you, Jesus. Evil has no power on the earth that's mightier than the Lord. And he promised us that he will watch over us. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you a hope in the future. See, I want you to understand. Back to the unanswered prayers. God has a plan with the unanswered prayers. He has the whole world in his hands. And the scripture says, we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. He has a plan with the unanswered prayers. Trust me. He has a plan. He's, he is up to something. He is up to something. God is up to something right now. He's healing someone. He's changing someone. He's making a way for someone right now. My God's always working. He's had one day off in centuries. And he hasn't taken a day off since. That's right. And he's working. He's working it out right now. And I'm telling you, with those unanswered prayers, there's a plan. Unanswered prayers in the moment caused me some of the greatest pains of my life, but gave me some of the greatest joys of my life. I, I, I know some of my, my believers who are older than me can testify that sometimes the unanswered prayers are the best prayers there are. Because the unanswered prayers that cause the most pain in the immediate bring the most joy later on. So I am telling you, Christian, do not get discouraged whenever you feel that God is not answering your prayers, whenever God says no to your prayers, whenever things are falling apart, whenever you pray, God, save my child, and they go even further from him, trust. Yes. Whenever you say, God, heal my relationship, yes. and it falls apart, trust. Whenever you say, God, take this addiction away from me, and it gets stronger, trust. That's right. 
trust in him and lean not on your own understanding. He is up to something. He is doing something right now for you. He is working things out for you right now. And God's going to eventually make everything right. Let's talk about the book of Revelations. Let me read this little bit of scripture from you from the book, for you, for the, from the book of Revelations. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, look, God's home and is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. Yes. He will wipe every tear yes. from their eyes. Yes. And there will be no more death yes. or sorrow or crying yes. or pain. Yes. All those things are gone forever. Yes. And the one sitting on the throne said, look, I am making everything new. This book is the truth, 100% the truth, and you can take it to the bank. Amen. And he promised that he's going to wipe every tear away. He's going to make everything new. He's going to turn things around. Yes. And then he said to me, write this down, for what I tell you is trustworthy and true. And he also said, it is finished. Yes. Ooh, yes. There's something powerful in those words. I think about it. My Savior stretched out on the cross as he cries out, it is finished. You know what he meant whenever he said, it is finished? He meant, I don't have to live in shame anymore. My sins don't define me. I am unworthy. But the spirit that rests in me is worthy of it all. And it is not by me that I am qualified. It is not by me that I am justified. But through him that I am justified. Yes. You don't have to live in shame. Your sins don't have to define who you are. Because yes. your father, your father has a name for you. Your father has a name for you. And that mistake, that sin, that don't define you. That's right. The Father has a new name for you. The Father has a purpose for you. And he always has a plan. I can't help but trust my God because I know that he's always got a plan. Though the fig tree may not blossom nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food, Though the flock may be cut off from the fold and there is no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in my God, in my salvation. Yeah. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet and he will make me walk on high hills. See, that's where Habakkuk's mindset changed. Habakkuk was the man who worshipped in an invasion. How could Habakkuk praise God? How could Habakkuk praise God knowing that everything was going to go wrong? Because God had a plan. Can my team come up here now? God's worthiness is not determined by your situation. God's worthiness is not determined by... God's worthiness is not determined by the storms that you face. Things are going to get bad. You read the book, things are going to get worse yet. They're going to get worse and worse and worse. But I'm going to praise anyways. I'm going to lift my hands on worship because everything could be falling apart and be going to hell in a handbasket, as they say. But I'm going to lift my hands and cry, worthy. My strength may fail me. My health may fail me. My finances may fail me. All these situations in life may fail me. But you know what I'm going to do? Is I'm going to be on my knees and cry and worthy. Because it's not the situation. It's not the circumstances that I face that make my God worthy. Even if my mental health gets worse and worse to the point that I can barely even function anymore. Because I'm so caught in my mind in a prison. 
I will cry worthy because I know my God is worthy in spite of it all. No matter what comes, come what may, it's going to get worse, but I'm going to cry worthy because he is worthy. I'm never going to stop worshiping because my God is worthy. He's worthy of every breath I have and then some. And I'm telling you now that when you worship him in spite of what you're facing, that's when things change. 